Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the Golgi and the anterograde pathway. So, so far what we've seen is that if you have a protein in the uh, endoplasmic reticular uh, membrane that you want to move uh, to the membrane of the Golgi, then what you can do is uh, you can bind that protein to these COP2 protein complexes. Uh, that will then allow you to um, pinch off a COP2 coated vesicle, which can then be moved along microtubules to the cis Golgi membrane. You can then fuse uh, this uh, COP2 coated vesicle with the cis Golgi membrane, and uh, that protein will then uh, be in the uh, cis Golgi membrane. However, we're looking at uh, the mechanism by which you do this, and it's through snare proteins, basically, which um, are going to uh, form these core snare complexes where they, the four alpha helices wrap around one another, pulling the two uh, opposing membranes together, and then they'll fuse, and uh, the two membranes will become confluent. So I want to just talk a little bit more about this core snare complex and what holds it together. Well, basically, there is a portion, which I'll highlight like this, a portion of each one of these alpha helices, of each one of the um, snare proteins, which is going to bind together. So all four of them are going to bind together at a point. And this point where they all bind together is known as the zero ionic layer. So this is the zero ionic layer. Okay, now... One of these snares at this zero ionic layer has an arginine amino acid, and that's the residue that it contributes to this zero ionic layer. The other three all have uh, glutamine amino acids at that zero ionic layer point, and somehow these uh, four amino acid residues are going to bind together, basically. Okay, right, and this is the reason that one of them is then called an R-snare, and in this case it's SEC22B, so this is an R-snare, and the reason is that it's the one that's contributing the arginine to the zero-ionic layer, basically, and R is the single-letter code for arginine, so R is the single-letter code for arginine, okay? And the other three, which are all, con uh, all contributing glutamines, are then called Q-snares. So these are all Q-snares, um, because uh, they're contributing glutamines, and that's what that Q uh, means. It, it, Q is the single letter amino acid code for uh, glutamine, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so... Um, let me show you the structure of glutamine, let me show you the structure of arginine, and then I will show you what, how these four helices are binding together. Okay, so, basically the structure for arginine then. Uh, so, um, oh, oh, yes, yeah, so let's start with arginine. So, start with the basic amino acid structure. So here's the amino group, here's the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it, Here's the carboxylic acid group here. Okay, so there's our basic amino acid structure. Then we have these free methylene groups, like so, all with hydrogens off, like so. So here are our free methylene groups. Then we have a nitrogen coming off here, and then a carbon with an amino group here, and then uh, the guanidino nitrogen down here. Now, usually, the guanidino nitrogens, well, actually, both of them are, in a sense, guanidino nitrogens. And the reason it's correct to say that both of them are guanidino nitrogens is because this one here, it will have a lone pair here, and it will acquire a proton, basically, which will be attracted to that lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen. So, in effect, what this structure is more like, it's more like having a carbon with two amino groups on it, like so, and then what's continuously happening basically is this carbon doesn't have enough bonds, so what's continually happening effectively is this nitrogen is donating its lone pair to the carbon and forming a bond in that way, so it contributes both electrons and that forms a transient double bond, then what's going to happen is this nitrogen takes its lone pair back and this nitrogen has a turn now 
that's what's meant by the resonant structure, that this double bond is effectively flipping between the two. And when the nitrogen donates its electrons uh, to the carbon, uh, then uh, that's what creates the positive charge on the nitrogen, effectively. Okay, so the, this end group, this terminus group, on, the terminal group on this uh, arginine has a positive charge, usually. Okay, uh, so... Uh, now let's have a look at the structure of uh, glutamine, uh, which is uh, single amino acid uh, code Q. Okay, so again, we'll draw the basic amino acid structure here. Okay, so here's the alpha carbon with the amino group off. Here's the carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, and now glutamine is basically the primary uh, amide of glutamate. So let's draw this basically out. So it's a free carbon carboxylic acid effectively, and then you just have an amine, one well, amide group there. So this is the structure of glutamine, which has the single letter amino acid code Q. So Q means glutamine, and uh, the single letter amino acid code for arginine is R. Okay, right. So the point is that these groups down here, these oxygens and these nitrogens, they have negative charges. Well, they have partial negative charges anyway. They're very polar. So they, they, they are more electronegative than the carbon. So they're going to pull the electrons in these bonds towards them. So the carbon will be po partially positively charged. And the glutamines, uh, oxygen and nitrogen here will be partially negatively charged. So what you effectively do then is these four... Um, excuse me a second. Um, these four uh, Q snares here they would all have these glutamines. So if I draw this like so, if we draw the uh, blue alpha helix here, then we have this pink alpha helix as well, like this. What they will do is they'll wrap around each other like so. Okay, here's the green alpha helix, and here's the orange alpha helix. What you'll have effectively is the arginine will come off this R snare, which is this, whoops, you can't see this. Uh, it will come off this R snare, which is SEC22B. So basically, here's the arginine, let's say, with a positive charge on it here. And then all the others will contribute their glutamines, which have this sort of partial negative charge on here. So here are all these glutamines. And basically, that is how you hold these four alpha helices together. It's one of the ways, anyway. They also all wrap around each other in a very tight structure. But this is one of the key bonds that is holding them all together. And that um, hold, that com forming of this core snare complex is really important for the fusion of the, um, of the vesicle that's come from the endoplasmic reticulum with the Golgi membrane.